Via telephone, Matt Knott from uh, River Riders in Jefferson County. Matt, good morning. Thanks for being with us today. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Matt, you're also on the Planning Commission in Jefferson County. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Okay, very good. Uh, and uh, just so you know, when you when you drive down 340, though, you might not be doing that as often now with the road work that soon will be completed. But uh, often to the right, you see those rolling hills. At one point last year, they were covered with uh, the snow you folks were making there. And then the next day, it was 72 degrees, and it was, it was all gone there. Uh, Matt, I wish you a, a better winter. I think you're supposed to get a, a, an El Nino this, uh, this winter, which should bring more snow to the Mid-Atlantic. Yeah, that's, that's what we're hoping for. The, yeah, the weather last year was kind of a blessing and a curse because we, we didn't think we were going to be able to get the construction done for the snow tubing. But because it was warm, we got it done. Then we got about three weeks of operation, and uh, then it warmed up again. So, um, but we had we had a great start, um, lots of lots of interest, and um, we had lots of visitors during the three weeks we were open. That's a good sampling right there. Does uh, when, when does the uh, the River Riders part of your business slow down? Uh, it has slowed down now. Uh, yeah, we we kind of uh, start uh, the the water activities wrap up uh, the rafting and tubing and. Uh, kind of end of September, beginning of October, and then the zip lining is kind of wrapping up now. I mean, if we have nice weather, we'll have people come out zip lining, but um, it's you know pretty well wound down for the year. And do you also lease some school buses, some some of your school buses to the local school districts? Oh yeah, so that's yeah, we're definitely busy with that. Right now. Um, you've probably heard of the the drivers in Berkeley County, so um, we do a lot of uh, kind of the in between uh, driving sports teams or. Uh, transfers uh you know those kind of activities. uh matt we're, we're losing your phone a little bit uh, sorry. i don't know if you can find a spot or not but uh, i'm in martinsburg so I, I, I tell you what <laughs> can you call us back hey you can hear me? i don't know what's going on oh yeah well, let me call you right wait 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 wherever you are whatever you're doing stay right there <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I, sorry. Ignore the light changes. Just stay where you are. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we yeah we do a lot of transportation for uh for uh, helping out Berkeley County Schools this time of year, Jefferson County Schools as well, and um, some of the other like small private uh, school districts in the area. Do you? Use um, a- you know they they have a driver shortage, so uh, we've been able to help out with that for probably close to ten years now, but. Uh, definitely more in the last five years do you supply the driver as well then oh yeah yeah so it's the driver and the vehicle yeah i think they have plenty of vehicles they just uh, have a driver so i think they have an issue getting drivers for like the in between the, the sporting events and some transfers and things like that we help them with about how many drivers and buses do you provide each year uh so we have probably up to 10 a day uh, that we do. Um, we also I have a, a business partner. We also own Varsity Travel, uh, which has an office in Martinsburg, and that operation um, is actually, um, you know, we do a good bit of work for the school system with that operation as well. Matt, um, Matt do you pay your drivers more than the county pays their drivers? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, per, on an hourly basis. On an hourly uh, basis, do. And, and do you find it hard to find drivers? It, it has definitely been a challenge. Uh, one of the benefits we have is that the um, our transportation manager is the uh, CDL tester for the state of West Virginia. So um, we, <laughs> we're able to recruit people sometimes because she ends up meeting people that are getting their CDL and then, you know, are looking for work kind of thing. Uh, she's also, like, pretty connected with everybody. She was a school bus driver for a long time. So uh, we just kind of end up, um, you know, a lot of people come to us for summer work kind of part-time summer work, and then when we end up having work in the off-season, um, you know, they end up staying. So a lot of people start out kind of on a part-time basis, and then because we have, we end up having a lot of work for them, they end up staying on a full-time basis. That's a smart way to get wired into new bus drivers, man. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah it, it ends up working out. Hey, Matt, this is John Gilstrap. Do you have a feel for what the the impact overall of the 340 construction has been on the, on the businesses? right along the river there well i think um the main thing has been the inconvenience um we did see a slight drop in business uh when the road closed but i think in general people are making the the um, detour 
Um, the issue that we have, uh, all the, the outfitters there in Harpers Ferry, is that the takeout where people get out of the river is at the Exxon there in Virginia between the bridges. So uh, it's about, you know, depending on traffic, up to a two-hour, uh, you know, round trip to get over there and back, which, you know, used to be 10 minutes each way. Yikes. Um, that That's the big impact. Um, as far as, you know, the visitors come to Harpers Ferry, from what I've heard, what we've seen, um, you know, it's, it's been a busy fall. I mean, the park was so busy, uh, like two Saturdays ago, they ended up closing the entrance, um, you know, only like one in, one out. Um, so I think the visitorship has still been, you know, good. It's just a big inconvenience for everybody. Matt, I've always seen you as a visionary in the area. We worked with you for a long time. How many visitors do you draw into the Eastern Panhandle on a given weekend on, let's say, middle of summer? Uh, on the weekend, probably around 5,000 um, come to River Riders. Wow. And, and that percentage is probably mostly out of state. Is that correct? I mean, oh, from yeah, the DC? definitely. But, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, D.C. and Baltimore is our main uh, market where folks come from. Um, interesting, with the snow tubing, uh, we, ha- we saw last year a lot more local people. I mean, 10 times the amount that we normally see. So. You know, normally it's 90% out of state, uh, you know, 10% in state for river riders, but the snow tubing was a much different. So we were happy to see that. We got a lot of, uh, you know, school groups and, um, you know, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, church groups, that kind of stuff. So talk, it was good to get some love. Talk to us about how the state has worked with you. Have you have you been able to work with the, the Board of Tourism, uh, the, the, the government, essentially? Have you had any help over the years um, with them or any issues? Yeah, the state has actually been really good to work with for a long time. Um, I was a tourism commissioner for probably 10 years um, with the state, um, but they have uh, quite a few programs. Um, We did – there is a tax credit that we were able to use uh, for the snow tubing. Basically, they use a portion of your um, investment costs. Uh, They allow you to offset it with a tax credit for sales tax. So uh, additional sales tax revenue that you create um, from bringing more people in, you're able to take some of that as a credit off your construction costs. So so that program is really good. Um, they have uh, advertising uh, grant programs where you can partner with them and do um, joint advertising efforts with the state. Uh, sometimes when you see uh, things on TV or um, radio in D.C. and you'll hear uh, the state of West Virginia on there, and then you'll hear another partner. That's kind of how that program works. Um, um, and they also, uh, the Small Business Development Center is really good to work with. Um, if you're looking, if you need um, help with, you know, any kind of project you're working on, they have help that they're very willing to give you. I mean, they helped me write a business plan um, when we uh, purchased the hotel next door. Um, and they've been very helpful um, quite a few times with new projects that we've been looking to you know develop matt i want to talk to you about business in jefferson county clearly there's a situation going on with the jefferson county commission where they've been unable to attain a quorum therefore they cannot conduct a meeting Uh, it's well publicized as to the reasons why the two commissioners uh kraus and jackson are not showing up for these meetings you're on the planning commission and you're a businessman in jefferson county are you feeling any effects of that? And uh, as a planning commission member, are you seeing any effects of that uh, uh, refusal to to uh, uh, attend meetings by those two commissioners? Yeah, so, I, you know, um, personally for River Riders, um, the, 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 if, the only, like, direct effect that we've had, but it is it's not, um, you know, minuscule, but we have a bond that we had to post when we did the construction uh, for the snow tubing. Um, you have to post a bond for stormwater management, uh, utility construction, all those kind of things. Well, the county commission has to uh, vote to release your bond. So we've been set up to have that bond released now for, um, you know, uh, a month or more. Uh, we probably actually finished it two months ago. By the time it actually got in front of the commission, it was maybe a month ago. So the issue that we have is that we'll have, we, you know, we've kind of been stalling with our insurance company because we have to renew our bond. Well, all the work is completed. You know, everything has been uh, checked off by DEP, by the, 
by the ins- building inspectors, uh, we can't get the water lease because they they aren't meeting. And so uh, it costs us to pay to renew the bond for another year, which is several thousand dollars, uh, you know, and, and all the work is already completed. It's just, you know, kind of an administrative thing, but we can't get it done because they haven't met. So the county will re- reimburse you for that, right? If, they, if they're not, <laughs> I mean, they should be responsible for the costs that you're incurring. And yeah, if the I county mean, doesn't, I think the the two commissioners should be responsible for that. Yeah, you you would hope it worked. You, you would hope it worked that way. Uh, some, somehow, I have a feeling that um, um, it, it's not going to work out that way. But yeah, um, yeah, it's definitely um, an inconvenience for sure. Are you getting any feedback or blowback as a planning committee member regarding these meetings not being held? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it just is putting a negative, um, you know, perception in the residents' mind of Jefferson County, uh, you know, of how the government's operating. And, you know, directly we've had a few people send uh, kind of some, I mean, concern emails to the, you know, planning commissioners about how things are going. Um, <laughs> we also uh, had a, a ruling that, um, you know, a vote that we had a couple weeks ago, and and afterwards we kind of got a you know sh- very sharp pointed email from uh, Commissioner Krause, you know, kind of chastising us on our um, decision that we made. Uh, you know, which I kind of thought was ironic, considering you know she's not even showing up for her meetings at all, and I'm a volunteer. I don't get paid for my position. Yeah, uh, Matt, this is Matt Miller, and, and I, I was just wondering, uh, how does that hamper what you do with the planning committee? Uh, so you're still holding meetings, but are, are there things that you can't do as a, uh, a planning commission or committee because the, the county commission is not meeting? Yeah, I mean, most of our, um, you know, most of our uh, decisions that we make in the meetings, they go through. But anything that's like an ordinance change um, uh um, things along that line that have to go to the county commission afterwards. All of those things, of course, are show. Um, you know, mainly they're like they. I don't know if you're aware. They kind of threw out uh, the solar uh, ordinance um, at the, the last meeting that that they did hold. Um, you know, they kind of. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure how legitimate it was, but they threw out the solar ordinance, and then they sent us an email. Uh, Commissioner Krause sent us an email saying that we were not allowed to approve any more solar projects or allow them to proceed, uh, you know, because of this decision they had made at this county commission meeting that I don't even think was actually legitimate. Um, so that kind of thing has happened. Um, you know, and then, like, a- any kind of thing that is related to the ordinance that has to then go to the county commission, of course, all those kind of things are stalled right now. Um, so none of that's none of that is moving forward at this point. Hey, Matt, this is John again. The, have you spoken to Commissioner Krause at all about the the rationale about this? Because it seems to me, I don't. I live in Berkeley County, so I guess I don't really have a dog in a fight. But we're at a, in a growth period here in the Eastern Panhandle. We're trying to attract uh, companies, large and small, to move to the Eastern Panhandle from the competitive areas around us, and we sort of have this this in my estimation, the clown car of, of commission activity. Do you have a sense of how that is impacting the, the exterior perception of Jefferson County? And have you spoken at all with, with commissioner Krause about where she's coming from on this? I I have not spoken with her directly. Um, Like, you know, she sent the email to us that I, that I thought was, you know, not really appropriate. Uh, But I decided not to, you know, directly reply. Uh, someone else replied to her. I think they said what what the, the most of the us as the planning commission members were feeling. So I just let it go at that. Um, but I do. It, it is known outside of the county, and I do. There are people that I talk to, you know, other business people outside of the county that, you know, basically are like, what is going on there? And you know, I think Jefferson County gets skipped over a lot of times for um, business development anyway. I mean, I think, you know, historically it was kind of seen as a, you know, no growth kind of area. Um, And, you know, people skipped over us, you know, quite a bit, you know, with all the um, 
you know, uproar about Rockwell. That didn't help. Uh, you know, now this is happening. You know, this is not helpful. Um, you know, and I think a lot of it, in my opinion, is people that have moved to the county. They want to be, they like it. They want to be the last person to move in. I grew up here. Um, uh, you know, I, I was raised in Cable Town. I moved to Shepherdstown, um, you know, so I've, I've lived in Jefferson County almost my whole life. Um, you know, and those of us that, that grew up here that have, you know, raised their family here, had kids, you know, want, want um, you know, their kids to have the opportunity to, to potentially stay in the area, you know, and find a job and, you know, have their own um, um, successful career. You know, we need businesses to move into the area. You know, uh, obviously everyone's well aware of the plight of West Virginia, um, you know, and this is the part of the state that, that, you know, has been able to see some growth. But, you know, honestly, the, you know, Berkeley County has seen far more growth than Jefferson County. Um, you know, and, and I, I do think a lot of times people look at Jefferson County and see the things that are going on. And if they are looking at bringing a business in, they just, you know, we have no choice. River Riders, you know, we, we need to be in Harpers Ferry. We, we can't move to Martinsburg. It doesn't work. You know, but, but you know, there, if you have the choice, it doesn't really matter, you know, which area you're in. If you're in an area that has a lot of, um, you know, um, people that are, you know, in, in a lot of disagreement and, you know, the, the things like you mentioned, just not holding meetings because, you know, you don't want a decision to be made. You know, they just go, I, I don't want to deal with that, and they skip right over and go to the next. What kind of rapids can we next. get on the Opekin? Maybe we can get something going. There. <laughs> so, Matt, this is Mike. Um, as a fellow business owner, I know you're uh, extremely busy with the amount of things that you have going on, but uh, I feel like you need to be running for county commissioner. <laughs> uh, That's I, the second biggest laugh he's gotten. I, I think you would. I think you're exactly what Jefferson County needs, and somebody with the vision that you have could maybe help them for the future. So, uh, maybe we need to have a meeting and get that uh, get that campaign going. My Cornby recruiter. Maybe. <laughs> maybe someday maybe someday someday like uh next week uh early, early yeah, january right. <laughs> well speaking of needing some new commissioners let me ask both of you matt and mike mike as a legislator and matt as a business person in jefferson county the the first thought that comes to my mind in how long this has continued to play out is at what point do two commissioners who have been elected to a position but refuse to do the duties of the position get told, do your job or get the heck out, we're, we're going to replace you? Are you hearing rumblings, Matt, from your perspective as a business owner and a, a planning commission member there in Jefferson County? And Mike, from a legislative pers per, uh, perspective, what, what can be done to remove people that refuse to do their job? I'll let Matt answer yeah, first. Yeah, from my perspective, I don't know what the rules are, but it is, um, you know, mind-boggling to me that they're able to stay in their role and not show up for work. I mean, where else can you do that where you just refuse to come to work? You still get your paycheck. Uh, you know, you're able to keep your job. I mean, at some point, it's job abandonment. You know, if you're in any other field, it's like, okay, you didn't come to work for a month and a half. I'm sorry. Uh, that's, that's plenty long enough. You're not even going to get that long to uh, – to do it so yeah it's mind-boggling to me that it's able to continue and i think you know once it starts affecting private business mm -hmm. actually affecting his he's gonna be paying thousands of dollars mm -hmm. right so it from a uh, legislative point and I, i've had these conversations um i think it's just i think the people should be crying that they they step down but i do think that the uh, prosecuting attorney should be able to remove them um for whatever means necessary and i think which is why i brought up the uh matt running for committee we, we need people to step up and say i want this position so that they can be replaced i mean mm -hmm. and that's the bottom line steve stolifer just the commission president just sent me a text that said matt not for county commissioner i like it at least he will show up for meetings <laughs> yeah. hey, i, I want to make it really clear to everybody listening here uh, that i have invited commissioner jackson and Commissioner Kraus on the program individually, and both declined to appear the date and time that I asked. I then followed up with, is there a better date and time? And neither replied to that question. So uh, I know uh, at least one individual feels that I have not, that I have been lazy in reporting have, this story. Let out me finish. Many times. Let me finish. That I've been that I've been lazy in reporting this story uh, because the media has a bias and an angle, and I can assure you, 
I don't have a bias and an angle on this story other than to try to get all the information out. But when one side doesn't want to, I, I don't have subpoena power. I've said that norm, numerous times. I can't compel somebody to be a guest on this show if they don't want to be. So if they don't want to tell their story here, that's fine. They'll, they'll tell it on their social media pages, but not here. But that does give the impression that I'm giving one side of the story. And the only reason why you're getting one side of the story is because the other side at this time doesn't wish to be a guest on this show. So, boom. And parenthetically, the other side makes no sense. Well, I didn't say that. They, they, did. they may have a good John story did. to tell. They may. Right. I don't know because they've not told it on this program. I, I think it's childish and, and they didn't get their way so they won't meet and and that's my opinion i, I don't know either one personally but um, they have a job to do mm -hmm. and sometimes that job is tough you have to take a vote you don't always get your way when you when you when you take a vote and it's the same thing in the legislature if you don't get your way you move on Mm -hmm. And you work to, to the next problem, and you try and get your, your, your way down the road, or you try and change something down the road, but you can't just not show up. Um, we've seen it done in the legislature, and you, you, just because you don't get your way is, is or, ridiculous. Or show up and be an obstructionist. You know, show up and, and just keep throwing sticks into the spokes and, and move on to other matters. Yep. But to not show up. Some, sometimes you, being ineffective is just ridiculous. So I want to also ask you a question. Keith Johnson just posted on our Facebook page. It says, this man owns River Riders and sits on the Planning Commission. It was reported that his business is attempting to get a $200,000-plus grant to build a solar array, which would have to be approved by the commission that he sits on. Is that a conflict of interest? Matt? Uh, do you want me to answer that? Yes, sir. <laughs> that, that is ludicrous. <laughs> You, you don't have he he's like probably thinking of like a solar farm or something like you know what's been going on we're, we're talking about putting a solar array on the roof of our uh of our um maintenance building to, sa to save you some money on electricity yeah there's yeah. no uh there, there's no you know it, it's this is not like a solar farm you're, um, you're putting panels on your building is what you're saying yes and you do not have to get planning commission approval to put plannings or panels on your building. You just need to get a building permit. So th this is how these this kind of things spread and take a life mm -hmm. of their own, though. Like that that's implying that you're going to clear out 50 acres and put a bunch of panels on your property. And you're you're hoping to get some money to do that yeah, from the commission. And by the way, this is our third solar project. We put the, at the time the largest private solar installation in the state of West Virginia on the Clarion Inn in Harpers Ferry when we owned it. We put that on the roof of that. We also have another solar installation on the roof of River Riders. Um, so this is our third one. And none of those three do we have to get planning commission approval to install. Um, Matt McKinney. Do you know Matt McKinney? Mr. Knox? I don't. All right. Matt I McKinney don't. says the Jefferson County Zoning Ordinance clearly states that any amendments must go through the planning commission. He posted that about eight minutes ago. Uh, I think we were discussing that earlier in this conversation. Uh, and then uh, I said it's also the same in state code. Any comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I was referring to as far as, uh, yeah, if, if there's an amendment, you know, basically we look at it first. Um, you know, we uh, basically send our suggestion to the county commission. And then they vote whether or not to approve it. That is the part that's totally on hold. Anything like that happening right now uh, is on hold. All right, very good. Matt, any final thoughts as we uh, let you get back to your, your business of doing business? Yeah, I mean, I just hope, you know, that uh, these ladies either, you know, show back up for work or we uh, find a way to move on without them. Because, you know, again, from my uh, side, it's mainly the perception of what's happening. Um, you know, it is impacting the, the employees at Jefferson County. But, you know, we work with the, the employees at the Planning Commission. It is impacting their, their daily work. They're not sure how they're supposed to act in certain situations where normally they have some guidance. Um, you know, it is really disruptive to the business at Jefferson County. And, you know, I hope we're able to move on from it soon. Matt, not thank you so much. I appreciate your time this morning. Sure thing. Thanks for having me on the show. Appreciate it. Absolutely.